All right, welcome to the session to kick off our memory analysis. Now, a quick overview. So first of all, you should make sure that you have installed volatility within your Ubuntu subsystem, uh, Linux subsystem on the Windows Forensic Workstation. So something to, that we have done in the previous session. And now we are going to discuss memory analysis and we'll get started with using volatility three. Now, the first thing that we need to understand when it comes to memory analysis on the Windows system is that there is, of course, the volatile data. Now, if we have acquired the disk image and the memory image of our target system, and the memory image was the one that we've taken first because that's considered volatile data. So basically, that means when you shut down the system, the memory is lost and we won't be able to read this uh, or, or retain or regain this kind of information anymore but that would be pretty unfortunate because there's a lot of valuable information that might have not been written onto the disk so that's why the memory is so important when it comes to life response when it comes to any like active attacker activity for example there might just be something on the memory that we wouldn't be able to find otherwise so one of the most important parts, it's not always possible in every investigation to get the memory uh, extracted or acquired from a system, but if you can, that's always the highest priority. Now, there's a couple additional files when it comes to memory analysis that we just need to keep in mind. So in Windows, we have a file called hibernation file, which is the hiberfield.sys. Uh, name, which means this is the file that Windows creates. If you, for example, put a laptop to sleep, it would then outsource or would write the memory to the disk so that it can load everything up faster again. And this is very interesting because if you have some, if you have this artifact on a disk, that means you can just use volatility to just parse this file as well. So the structure is very similar, and volatility can read it. So you can perform memory analysis based just on just based on this file, and that might also be a backup option in case the memory is gone, for example. But of course, keep in mind this file might have been generated further in the past. Now, two more uh, additional files that we should be aware of uh, in this context is the page file and the swap file. So these are Windows files that are being generated when Windows just uh, wants to outsource the blocks of the memory to save some space. So some of those blocks might have been written into the swap file and or the page file. So the page file is something that came in the newer versions, but swap file still exists. And we can actually go ahead and I can show you that in uh, my FTK image here real quick. So I have um, loaded up the uh, Windows 10 target system. And if we go into the root, there is no hibernation file, of course, because that's not what happened, but we have a page file and we have a swap file. It was not part of the CAPE uh, data acquisition, but still it is on the original disk image. So if we were to go back and wanna find certain evidence of anything that might have happened, any artifacts, we could also go through these. And those are also binary files. So one way to parse through these might, for example, be using the strings utility to just see if there's any evidence, any strings or text that we could find that matches a certain artifacts that, or indicators that we are looking for. We won't need to do that in this case here, but just uh, it's just a very important concept to be aware of if the memory is lost, not all hope is lost, but there's a couple of backup options that we have here. Now the objective of this session here is that we wanna definitely stick with the practical side of the memory analysis. So triaging and running volatility, gain some technical information, but memory and Windows internals is an extremely complex topic. And there is entire books and workshops that are just uh, written based on the memory internals and understanding those. So that would be way outside of the scope of uh, this course to really go into the weeds of how memory structures work. But a couple of concepts we will definitely come across because those are important to understand in order to be able to use volatility or why to use one plugin versus another but again we'll stay on a we will stay more on a high level because really the goal is to be able to become familiar with the memory forensic tool the for volatility 3 and then just extract the information that we need but that being said there is definitely some really interesting information out there especially by the developers of the volatility 3 tool or volatility in general 
There's a book out there called The Art of Memory Forensics, and I highly recommend to go through this. It's uh, pretty comprehensive, but it is really explains everything in detail that you need to know around memory and when it comes to using volatility and making the most out of it. Also, because malware can be extremely tricky, and just because we are able to use a tool doesn't mean that we will be able to find everything and anything, because malware can be extremely tricky and also hide, so there is not always a guarantee that we will be able to find everything we should be finding when we do memory analysis. It really has a lot to do with experience and skill. Now, let's go ahead. The first thing we need to do is we need to actually find our memory acquisition file so that is still for me hosted on my host system so if i open up my windows explorer and then there is the evidence folder and this is where we have the disk image and also the memory file the memory image located now if we if we just run volatility we can't really do it through this network drive and we also can't uh, mount this on our Ubuntu environment. So the best way to do so and also to make uh, for performance reasons, it's best to just copy this file and paste it into somewhere locally into, uh, for example, our analysis folder. And then from there, create a new folder, say, call it memory. And then I'll just paste it in here and that will definitely speed up things when we start using tools uh, that are parsing through this four gigabyte file all right the file has been copied over um, ideally what we would now do is to do a hash check making sure that everything is still the integrity has been preserved and from here then we can now go ahead and take a stab at volatility. So let's open up our Ubuntu terminal. And once this is done, we can now just go ahead and say, for example, ls or pwd, which is showing us the path that we are in. Now we are, for me, my system is set up as the forensics user and I have no files within this directory. So one thing that we need to do now, we can use volatility, but we need to point it to this particular file. So the easiest thing is because we'll probably produce some output files is to change to this path to the C drive cases analysis and memory folder so that we can just work from within that uh, directory. And so in order to do that is the, we need to use the CD command to change directory. And then the C drive is actually located in backslash mount mnt and then c and then from there we can type cases and hit tab to autocomplete analysis tab to autocomplete memory to autocomplete and now you should be able to find this directory as well and change into this and change into this path so if i do pwd you can see now we are in mount c cases analysis memory and if I do an ls, you can see here is our Windows 10 memory file. Now let's get started using volatility. So the first thing that we can do is volatility, we can call it by just typing vol. And then the first thing that we can do is just dash h for the help menu. And so now a couple of things that we need to be aware of. As you can see here, there's actually a lot of different plugins that we can use. But if I'm going to scroll up all the way to the beginning, so volatility version 3 and build number is 2.0.1. So you should make sure that you at least on the latest one. And then we can use it by typing vol, or in this case, it says volatility, but for us it's vol. And then there's a couple of parameters. We can add a dash F and point it to a file. And then there's a couple of options that we can choose uh, from. But the most important thing is once you point it to a file and we want to parse for and then analyze the particular file at hand, we want to just run a plugin. So with all the parameters in mind here, there's only a few that really might be interesting to us in this case. But really what we need is F for file and then the particular plugin. 
Now, there's one more thing that everybody needs to know about if you want to run volatility on a forensic workstation, for example, where you might not have internet access. So memory samples or Windows builds, I should say, those memory structures are always oftentimes very different. So with every build almost, it changes slightly. So volatility always needs to know how to read the particular memory file at hand and how to interpret the structure in order to show us information. And to do so, volatility needs to know about us, about the symbols. So the symbols are basically what describes the profile so that uh, volatility can actually read the memory file. And this symbols is something that automatically, if we just run volatility and have internet connection, uh, vol uh, the first time if the profile is unknown, then volatility would just reach out to the internet and download the particular symbol that it needs in order to work with the memory file. And that is really handy. That is the biggest improvement, in my opinion, between volatility version 2 and ver version 3. So now we do not have to define the particular Windows profile anymore because volatility is able to figure it out by itself only if we have internet access. So if we go over to the GitHub repository real quick for Volatility 3, there is a couple of important things that you could read up on, but one thing that is wanted to show you about the symbols is that if you do not have internet access, then you need to download the symbols table. So this table now includes the descriptions for the different Windows, Windows builds, and you have to put it into the volatility 3 symbols directory so that uh, volatility can actually work with it. Otherwise, it would do it automatically if you have internet access. But again, this is the most important part to get your analysis going. But, but once you have successfully fingerprinted a, a memory image, then you should have those symbols in your folder and there is no need to do that again for the same type of build. So that's just something to be aware of. And in the beginning, you will probably see some delays because once you start reading a memory file, volatility needs to first figure these things out and download files before it can actually process the, the particular memory file at hand. So with that being said now, let's focus on the plugins. So this is basically what we are going to be using throughout the rest of this analysis. For plugins, we can choose the plugins for a Linux for Linux versions. There's plugins, as you can see here, for Macs. And then further down, we can see there's plugins for Windows. Now, one more that is interesting is Timeliner. So that is a generic plugin that just basically runs all the relevant plugins for the particular operating system. And it puts them all into once the output into one single file and then you can sort them by time so it generates a timeline based of all the parses that are available it can be useful uh, you won't get timestamps for everything that's around here um, certainly something to explore but for us we want to pick and choose more targeted so here you can see windows plugins and the way how you define or how you use a windows plugin is just by by adding the option windows dot and then for example here cmd line and then dot and then there's the sub command in this case it's again cmd line so that might be a little bit confusing because you can see this is pretty repetitive and the truth is that for the most part we are okay with just using the second parameter we don't need the third one unless you come across something like for example the registry so let me scroll down to that so as you can see here Windows.registry, there's plugins that actually go a little deeper. There's registry.hivelist, there's Windows registry.hivescan. So this goes just a level deeper. So that's why it's important to watch out for that and make sure that you are selecting the right plugin. But mostly like here with Windows PS3, for example, we are fine just using two levels of this command. So now the first thing that I usually I like to kick this an analysis off with is the Windows Info plugin, which shows us the operating system and kernel details of the memory sample being analyzed, which we can now go ahead and just execute. So if we go down to our command line and type vol, and then the first parameter is, like we mentioned earlier, dash F, and then we can point it to our Windows memory file, which I have in this directory. And then all we need is Windows and then Info, And this is now going off and scanning, starting to scan the memory sample. 
and it would download the profile or the symbols if needed and if it's not needed it will then go of course a little bit faster and uh, it might just still take a while but once we have done this usually the next couple times are going a little faster so i'll just uh, let this run and then fast forward to when we when this is done all right, so here we are a couple seconds later. This is the output of Windows Info. So we can see here, there's the symbols file and it actually grabbed it from my volatility three and symbols folder. And here's the particular version. So what we saw is, first of all, this is a 64 bit operating system. And the next thing that is interesting, uh, a couple things down here, for example, the Windows major and minor version. So this is built 15.1776.3. Uh, that's uh, something that we can look up online. Then the next thing is we can see the system root. So after, this is something you could technically change, but usually it's always the Windows folder. And then here's the product type, which is basically the product WinNT. WinNT is the Windows family and major version is 10. So this means this is a Windows 10 system and that's the built version of it.